Let's look at verse 12. <clears throat> the merchandise of gold and silver. So what kind of merchandise would the Catholic Church take charge of? Look at the past 2,000 years of church history, and you'll see the Roman Empire, the Roman Catholic Church, and even today dominate all of this. They have gold, silver. Um, when you talk about some interesting conspiracies about where did all the gold go, they try to, uh, they say that the gold in Fort Knox and etc., that all of that is fake. That's why we switched the currency. Because why? Where did all the gold go? It's controlled by globalists. But when you go to the religious background of the globalists, it's, you won't just find them with famous bankers, but you're going to find it eventually reach a Jesuit or a Roman Catholic individual. And it's very interesting where a lot of people want to aim for Rothschild, who is part of the Jewish system, and he's known as an extremely wealthy banker. You know what his title is? His title is the guardian of the Vatican's treasury. Wow. So a lot of people don't know that. See, so look, no matter how high you go, you'll see something Catholic involved. So that's where all the gold is going. Read the book Vatican Billions. Undoubtable, man. These people have all the wealth all the gold. They have the silver naturally, the latter part of verse 12, and precious stones, obviously. Just look at their buildings. You can see that's where all the material is going to go, right? Even if you look at their normal buildings. And the pearls, what church always uh, emphasizes beads, right? Always having beads. Uh, how about that? But now they got pearls. And fine linen, what religion emphasizes fine linen, right? And purple. What religion emphasizes purple, right? So look, look, this is screaming Catholic, Catholic, Catholic. It's Rome. You can't say America, America, okay? It's definitely Rome. And silk and scarlet. What part of the garments, what religion emphasizes that too, right? Silk, red, colored robes, scarlet. And this is interesting. All thion wood. Now that's interesting. What is Thyan wood? Yeah. This screams more of Roman Catholic. You know why? I'll tell you why. So if we look at all the merchandise, we can see that from all the merchandise over here, that this is clearly something Rome would have. Gold, silver, pearls, etc., etc. Now through this Bible word, when we look at merchandise over here, it is interesting that they mention also thion wood. Why is that? Because thion wood, if you look that up, that is a special part of wood that's becoming very rare in the land of pa uh, what they call the land of Palestine now, but we recognize it as Israel, obviously. <coughs> Excuse me. But within Israel, it's a rare element, thion wood, rare part of wood. It was given that name by two groups of people during biblical times. This wood was very precious to them for burning sacrifices. Wow. Now remember, Babylon has a, sacri uh, has a sacrifice called with the golden cup, and that's the Catholic Mass. They have the blood of the saints. Remember, they're offering tribulation saints as sacrifices, which I explained in Revelation 6. This is where the, this is precious thine wood, and you know who named it? Romans. Wow. Romans, given them that name. That? So you can't tell me it's United States of America. Because this particular piece of wood, Rome. Mm -hmm. Now here's something interesting. I'm not, telling, I'm not talking about the timing of the rapture, but I'm going to tell you something very interesting. They have to have thigh and wood during the tribulation. It's becoming very rare in Israel. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> how close are we to the rapture? on how rare the thion wood could be. Mm. But keep an eye out for that, okay? Keep an That's eye out cool. for that. That might be something interesting over there. Who would have thought that, this is how interesting your King James Bible yeah. is. Yeah. Gold, silver, precious stones, I know, Lord, I know, Lord. And God's like saying, no, you don't know, Lord. You don't yeah. know, yeah. son, okay? Amen. You don't know, child, all right? Amen. You don't know what I'm talking about here. Notice the wording, all thion wood. Yeah, all. You know why? Because it's a rare, it's a rare type of material that they use for merchandise. Now, and all manner of vessels, so all sorts of vessels. <laughs> what church, excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, what church, what, <clears throat> oh my goodness, I got a bug on my throat. 
Yikes. All right. Anyways, I'm back. So, all what religion would have all sorts of vessels, right, in their church? Dishes, cups, vessels, etc., etc. What religion would have that? The Roman Catholic Church again. All manner of vessels of ivory. That's precious, those materials. Ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood. All sorts of precious wood. And a brass. And iron and marble. Look at the Catholic Church buildings and cathedrals. They would consist of all these rich vessels. Precious wood everywhere. Marble, iron, brass, etc., etc. Everywhere. Yeah. Verse 13, and cinnamon and odors, so all sorts of uh, ointments and smells, and ointments, so you got the perfumes, and frankincense, that's a special kind that uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was given that kind of uh, oint, uh, that incense as well. Frankincense, actually, it's, uh, your King James Bible is very self-explanatory. Well, the King James Bible is so hard to understand. No. Frank, it's Frank, incense. So that's, what, frankly speaking, it's what they use for incense. Amen. There you go. Yeah, okay. Amen, that's occasionally used for incense. What religion uses incense quite often, oh, right? Oh, yeah. This is Roman Catholic. And wine, what religion emphasizes wine? Uh, yeah. And oil and fine flour and wheat. What religion emphasizes in oh, using fine nice. flour and wheat? Nice. And yeah. bees and sheep and horses and chariots. So notice over here that the uh, and slaves. Now notice over here the Bible talks about how the Babylon system has all sorts of livestock: bees, sheep, horses, chariots. Now here's a question though: if it's talking about, it's not just current material goods, these elements that you can find today, but what's very strange is that it's talking about foreign objects which should have been extinct a long time ago. So there's no such thing as a chariot today. So why would there be a chariot during the timeline of the tribulation? It makes you wonder. So this is where it is very important to understand that when you look at words in your King James Bible, you can't just automatically assume that a chariot would be a chariot or when they talk about a certain weapon, a sword or a spear as a literally a sword and a spear. A lot of people make that mistake. You can't just take the Bible literally as it says you have to understand all uh, all branches of hermeneutics, biblical interpretation. Right. You got to understand that during the timeline of John, there was no such thing as a Mustang. John wouldn't know that in his vocabulary, and if he wrote that during his timeline, people would not understand that. Um, when they talk about a flight, the the Jews would take their flight to flee from the Antichrist. John mentions flight, but he doesn't mention airplane or helicopter. Why? Because people understand what flight means, but in our in current day and age, we know what flight means. It would be like through an airplane. So what you've got to understand is this. What you've got to understand is the author is trying to use the best wording yeah. that people would understand when they read the Bible because the Bible is not just written to us very special modern 21st century people. The Bible is written for people of all timelines. Right. So when you look at these words... Don't let it confuse you, and don't bring a wrong interpretation. you got to be careful of that. A lot of people, they get a little giddy when they take literal interpretation and come up with a wild theory, actually. And I notice that's very bad amongst us Bible believers. I see that online is even worse. Online amongst Bible believers yeah. and people who graduate from PBI. Because Dr. Upman has trained us so well in understanding that book literally, that we take it to the extreme that we're connecting further literal words together and coming up with a, a weird imaginative literal interpretation that God had no idea of doing. Remember, literal interpretation does not mean you're godly because the Catholic Church takes a literal interpretation from John chapter 6 as well for eating the flesh and the blood of Jesus right, Christ. Right, right, so you right. have to be very careful of that. You have to be very careful of that. So, so sometimes the right interpretation can be metaphorical. Figurative interpretation, you gotta understand, is just as important as literal. You gotta understand that. How do we know that it will be figurative, not literal? How you do that is looking at the context. 
You look at the context, and then you look at the, the historical context as well. Dispensationalism, which makes it very effective, it takes the historical grammatical context because it looks at the context of the words and the history behind it, which is very, very effective, actually. Okay, let's look at uh, back over here. And we have to end it off quickly. So let me finish off verse 13 and then we'll close it. And slaves and souls of men. So notice over here that Babylon will also have slaves. They will have slaves. You've got to understand the Antichrist will have slaves. Look at James chapter 5. And not just slaves, they have souls of men. Why is this important? The reason why is this, because in the tribulation, you have to maintain and protect your soul. Because salvation is by faith and works in the tribulation. So because it is by faith and works in the tribulation, that's why they have to keep their soul from following the Antichrist system. And that's why the Antichrist, uh, he will persecute these tribulation saints by making them slaves. He's going to enslave them. Not just torture or kill them, but he's going to enslave them as well. And under that, so much persecution and pressure, they have to maintain their salvation and not cave in. Look at James chapter 5, verse 4. Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. So who is he talking about? Verse 6. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you look at that he's talking about rich people at verse one right. that's why the right. elite system they will join the antichrist right. system yeah. you know why there's no such thing as a poor person uh if you're a poor person in the tribulation timeline you know what's guaranteed you're going to be a tribulation saint you're not going to be a rich person yeah. you might say why you can't buy or sell when you have the mark without right. the mark right. of the beast you're going to be dead poor so not only that, they condemn and kill the just at verse 6. Uh, verse 3 shows the timeline is tribulation, last days. See that? Uh, verse 7 talks about the coming of the Lord. He's telling the people, that's why be patient until Jesus comes to you. See that at verse 7? Yep. See, they have to wait. Verse 8, be patient. Why? Because they're maintaining their souls. That's why they have to help each other in protecting each other's souls. Because if you look at verse 19 and 20, look at 19 and 20. It's protecting the soul. See that? Verse 19 and 20. Protecting fellow brethren, their souls, through this patience during the timeline of the tribulation. That's why the last part of verse uh, 13, which we will close, the souls of men. The Roman Catholic Church has damned too many souls, so the Lord damns her in return. Amen. So let's just double this. Right? Amen. Let's just double this.